Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at all of the latest and greatest changes to CMU, RPCS3, Ryujinx, and Yuzu emulators. All of these changes which I'll be covering are available to use right now in the latest mainline or master versions of all of these emulators, so all you need to do is download their latest build to get access to every single thing I'm going to be taking a look at. The first emulator I'm going to cover is CMU. This emulator for the Wii U has implemented a huge rewrite to their PowerPC and Cafe OS threading. This has implemented a brand new method of using multi-core recompilers within the emulator. Now previously, CMU had implemented a system where the user could define whether they wished to use single core, dual core or triple core recompilers. This new update gets rid of dual and triple core recompilers, instead replacing them simply with the option for multi-core. This new multi-core setting not only uses less CPU resource on your system, but it also in most cases greatly boosts your performance. You can see here in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I get 5 to 7 frames per second more, while at the same time using less CPU resources. In Mario Kart 8, I get the same or better performance when using between 5 to 11% less CPU. And again, in Wind Waker HD, I get the same or greater performance, while at the same time using between 12 to 14% less CPU utilization. Similar performance and resource saving measures can be seen across the board on most games on the emulator in its latest versions, so please make sure to download and check out the brand new multi-core recompiler setting. You can find this in your game's game profile setting by right clicking in the games list. Moving swiftly along, let's now take a look at RPCS3 and some of the more major changes there in the last month. First up, we're going to be taking a look at God of War 3, a hugely popular game in the community, and a game which has received another major improvement to its game patches. What you're currently watching is the game previously running at 720p unpatched versus 4K resolution using the brand new patches that were released in the last 2-3 weeks. These patches remove several graphically intensive effects like depth of field, motion blur, and color grading, resulting in a hugely improved frame rate. On top of this, we also saw a giant boost in performance at higher resolutions thanks to an update to the MLAA removal patch. This patch improved performance by between 10 to 15 frames per second when playing the games at higher resolutions like you're seeing right now of 4K. Speaking of patches, many other games saw great improvements to performance and visual quality, one such example is in The Last of Us. Thanks to an update to its MLAA removal patch, you no longer get horrible broken green particles in many areas of gameplay. Yet another improvement to The Last of Us is the inclusion of brand new patches, allowing you to select the intensity of the bloom effect within gameplay. When paired together, these two patches deliver a staggering improvement to not only visuals but also performance in certain areas. Right here, you can see that there is a significant improvement to rendering quality, and if you pay attention to the frame rate counter in the top of the window, you can see that we've gotten a nice little boost in performance thanks to the addition of a new speed boost patch. Now, it's not just games like God of War 3 and The Last of Us that have seen really great improvements on this emulator. Thanks to the addition of multi-threaded shader compilation, pretty much every single game is now infinitely faster at compiling shaders. Let's take a look at a few examples. To compare this, we're going to be starting gameplay at the exact same moment, then comparing the amount of time it takes for the shaders to compile on the new system versus the old. Here in The Last of Us, you can see that this new system set to 4 threads for shader compile operation took 4 seconds to compile all of the shaders in this first scene, while this old version took 19 seconds to complete all of its shader compilation. Again, let's take a look at Killzone 3, where as with The Last of Us, I'm going to skip this cutscene at the exact same moment, begin my timer, then see how the old system varies versus the new. Already on the new system, when set to 4 threads, it has compiled all of its shaders within almost 6 seconds, while we are absolutely nowhere close to that time on the older system. Let's just wait and see exactly how many times longer it took on the old 
versus the new system. You can see now we're getting some shaders, and there you go. It's 26 seconds versus 5 seconds. That's a pretty damn impressive improvement to shader compilation speed. Now, I did have a load of these different kind of comparisons lined up, but they all kind of seemed a little bit boring, and the results were pretty much the same. As you can see in this final example where we're not really timing anything, but due to the fact that it takes so much time for the game's shaders to build that you can see invisible parts on the cars, it really shows you how much faster this new system is versus the old. As I said throughout this section, I was only using 4 threads for shader compilation. Depending on your CPU and the amount of cores or threads you have, you can assign it more to make it even faster. For example, since my CPU has 8 cores and 16 threads, I could, in theory, apply 16 threads for shader compilation, making it pretty much instantaneous shader compilation regardless of the game. On top of these shader changes, we also saw some improvements to the way resolution scaling is handled. For example, in games like Ninja Gaiden 3, we no longer need to set a custom resolution scale threshold when using resolution scaling on specific games like you can see here in Ninja Gaiden 3. Another game affected by these changes is Bioshock Infinite. Here you can see when we transition from the old system to the new that graphics are greatly improved when resolution scaling at the default settings of the emulator. If you've ever experienced graphical bugs when changing the resolution scale of your game, please test it out on the latest master to see if graphical issues are now fixed. Of note, if you are playing Bioshock Infinite on this emulator, it is still advised that you use a resolution scaling threshold of 256 by 256 otherwise there are certain darker scenes in gameplay that will still have slightly green tinted graphics. These resolution scaling fixes also changed the way Bloom is rendered in games like God of War 3. Previously there was pixelation around the rendered Bloom. To fix this, you need to set your resolution scaling threshold to 160 by 160. As always, when there are any new changes to RPCS3, I'll be sure to let you know as soon as possible. For now, let's move on to Ryujinx Emulator, where we've seen a ton of upgrades and optimizations, specifically those that greatly improve rendering, performance, and something I know a lot of you, pretty much all of you out there, have been waiting for for a long time. They have finally implemented a working and performant shader cache. While the addition of this shader cache does not increase performance, it does massively increase game compatibility and general playability since once you have your shaders cached to this disk shader cache, you are not going to be experiencing in-game stutters like previously would have before. When you combine their PPTC JIT cache, which allows games to boot much faster with this shader cache implementation, it makes for a hugely more enjoyable experience on this emulator, and with the prospective release of their next LDN build which allows for a local online multiplayer, I'm absolutely looking forward to what Ryujinx are bringing to the table for Switch emulation in the coming weeks. Based off the gameplay of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity that you've been watching for the last few minutes, they have also greatly improved the rendering quality of this game, fixing several graphical artifacts that could happen, for example vertex explosions are far less common now, and they also fixed issues where transparent texture normal maps were not correctly rendering, meaning that surfaces like water and ice are now properly rendered in the emulator. On top of this, we also got several fixes for Unreal Engine games, with Unreal Engine 4 titles like Octopath Traveler, Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, and Yoshi's Crafted World now rendering much, much better on the emulator, on top of fixing an issue where Nvidia GPUs Pascal or older would simply crash when trying to boot these games at all. While Yoshi's Crafted World does indeed render a lot better, especially so since it no longer crashes on my GPU, there are still several graphical corruption issues affecting this game. Regardless, it's still seen some stellar progress, especially so with the crash fixes we've recently received. Xenoblade games have also seen several improvements both in relation to smoothness and graphical rendering. For example, the horrible black cube-like objects that were previously rendered in every single area have now been completely fixed, and while the texture swapping issue is not currently fixed on Ryujinx, they do have a lot of things in the works for these games, especially so a PR that is being demonstrated on screen right now, which greatly improves the smoothness of gameplay, 
fixing apparently a bug where two frames would be presented instead of one, causing a huge slowdown on the GPU side. This and many more changes they're currently working on have me very excited for the future of this emulator and as always I'll be sure to keep you notified as soon as anything major changes in relation to compatibility. For now we're going to stay on the topic of Nintendo Switch emulation and take a look at some of the latest changes to Yuzu emulator. The first change we're going to take a look at is something I know quite a few of you out there will be very excited for. They have implemented full keyboard and mouse support, allowing you to map your mouse movements to your thumbsticks, allowing you to move your cameras in any specific games, no longer relying on only keyboard mapping for game functionality. While I'm an absolute potato when it comes to controlling Super Mario Odyssey or pretty much any game with my mouse as a thumbstick, I can see this being a very welcome change for a lot of people, especially those who require this kind of use case for accessibility reasons. The current implementation requires you to left click on your screen in order to use the thumbstick movement functionality, though this is possibly going to be changed in future, allowing for movement of the mouse alone without clicks, allowing you to individually map left and right mouse click to other inputs in your controller configuration. This has come as a very welcome addition, especially since we've just been given controller profiles, allowing you to create custom controller or mouse and keyboard configuration for each and every one of your specific games. The next change we're going to take a look at is one that's a little hard to demonstrate, so I'm just going to capture my window and show you anyway. By coming to System and selecting Custom RTC, you are now able to, in real time, change your time and date, allowing you to edit on the fly things like Pokemon spawns, Dynamax dungeons, Poke jobs, and pretty much everything else that is reliant on the in-game clock or timer. As you can see me doing here, when I changed my time of date, not only does the day and weather pattern change, but also the Pokemon spawn tables for every specific region. We saw a lot of other improvements to Yuzu. These mainly came in the form of a JIT rewrite that basically removes the need to use a page file and dramatically reduces the amount of memory usage the emulator has. On top of the texture cache rewrite, which I covered at length in my video just a few days ago, if you haven't checked out that video, I will leave a link for it down in this video's description. At the time of making this video, both of those changes are currently in Yuzu's early access builds and will be covered in a follow-up video. Especially important to me are the JIT changes that dramatically improve memory usage. That PR should be added to mainline in the next few days and as always, I'll be sure to let you guys know as soon as it is. As I said in my last video, I have four brand new complete setup guides ready to edit and get uploaded those being for RPCS3, CMU, Yuzu and Ryujinx. As always, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you get notified as soon as those videos and guides are uploaded and released. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. If you want to help to support any of these emulators in their development, you'll find links to each and every one of their individual Patreons down in this video's description. And if you enjoy these kind of video overviews, please consider pledging to my Patreon any and all support is absolutely appreciated. As always guys, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.